Good evening. Welcome to RFL. That's right. It's debate night. I'm Richard French. We're going to start at Longwood University. That's in Farmville, Virginia, the site of tonight's VP debate between Tim Kaine and Mike Pence. Well, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton prep for Sunday's second presidential debate here. Let's head over to uh, Lana Zak, who's going to set things up for us as we get ready for tonight. Hi there. Donald Trump says he will be live tweeting tonight's debate. Hillary Clinton spokesperson here just a moment ago responded with glee to that news. We don't know if Clinton will do the same, but we do know that both candidates will be watching their VPs intently. Hillary Clinton. In this election, which is unlike any other in American history, the vice presidential debate tonight may have a greater impact than ever. Especially undecided voters might be taking a look and saying, well, maybe I can make up my mind based on the vice presidential candidate. But while the two men in Farmville tonight, Republican Mike Pence, governor of Indiana, and Democrat Tim Kaine, a Virginia senator, are surrogates for their presidential candidates, they are relative unknowns to much of America. An ABC News Washington Post poll found that 40 percent of Americans couldn't name either VP candidate. But tonight may change all that. He'll go out there in a fiery performance, especially for somebody who's known as so low-key. Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway on CBS promising a debate performance to remember from Pence, who we're told has been thoroughly preparing for tonight's matchup, holding mock debates and scooping the site earlier today. Pence walks into this debate behind in the polls and following a week of controversies for his running mate, Donald Trump, including the revelation that Trump may not have paid income taxes for nearly two decades. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton's running mate has, unsurprisingly, her full confidence. How is Senator Kane going to do tonight? Kane looking casual touring the debate hall today, his team releasing a new ad painting Trump and Pence as one in the same. Both men expected to be on the offensive, leading up to what may turn out to be one of the most important moments in this campaign. Behind the scenes, the campaigns tell us they think that they may have their biggest audience share in the first 30 minutes, so they expect that the punches are going to start flying right off the top. Reporting live from Farmville, Virginia, Lana Zach, ABC News. Back to you. All right, Lana, thank you very much. And now, before we bring in the panel, I just wanted to show you a little highlight reel of some past VP debates. Admiral Stockdale, your opening statement, please, sir. Who am I? Why am I here? <laughs> I'd like to start by offering you a deal, Jack. If you won't use any football stories, <laughs> I won't tell any of my warm and humorous stories about chlorofluorocarbon abatement. It's a deal. I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> I think if you ask most people in America today that famous question that Ronald Reagan asked, are you better off? today than you were eight years ago, most people would say yes. And I'm pleased to say, see Dick from the newspapers, that you're better off than you were eight years ago, too. And most of it, uh, <laughs> and I, I can tell you, Joe, that the government had absolutely nothing to do with it. <laughs> Barack Obama will change it. Governor. Ah, say it ain't so, Joe. There you'll go again, pointing backwards again, though. You prefaced your whole <laughs> comment with the Bush administration. Now, doggone it, let's look ahead and tell Americans what we have to plan to do for them in the future. Getting all mavericky on us. And uh, speaking of uh, getting maverick on us, we have Shelly Mayer, Democratic Assemblywoman representing Yonkers, <laughs> David Carter, political journalist and author, Chris Shays, former Republican congressman from Connecticut, and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Uh, you know, Dom, in these things, usually the job of the VP is um, to make sure that you make people comfortable, that in the event that your name is called, mm -hmm. that you could be presidential. But in a lot of ways, it seems that these two guys have to validate their bosses that are going to be going for round two on Sunday night. Uh, you know, I know some people have already said, why can't we have Pence instead of Trump on the Republican side? <laughs> Hillary's not beloved either among Democrats. Uh, but nonetheless, it's an interesting dynamic tonight. I agree with your assessment. It points to the fact that we have two candidates with very, very high, unlikable uh, ratings. But, you know, we may make fun of a VP debate, but I, I want to keep this in mind. I thought about this earlier today. We have seen several cases, I believe uh, about a dozen, where the VP has moved into the president's slot. So this is real. And we should all be paying attention to this tonight because ultimately uh, one of these two could end up being president mm. of the United States. 
We're going to see some verbal jujitsu, uh, especially from Pence, I think, where he's got to uh, both defend Donald Trump, but yet not sp spend too much time on Donald Trump if he can. But who's the audience? They said, for example, we got more than 80-something million people who tuned in for the first debate, which was a record. They think as many as 50 million. Maybe they're being optimistic or watch at least a portion of tonight. Is it women that's the target audience they're speaking to? Who are they trying to convince of the limited undecided pool still out there? Well, I think we, we are trapped when we use the word undecided. I think people are, uh, I, I don't like to use the word undecided because it makes it sound like they haven't paid attention. They are not satisfied. They may be leaning towards Trump but have found his behavior completely objectionable and not uh, something they can vote for in the coming election. They have reservations about Senator Clinton. And therefore, I think this is an important debate for them to say, you know, all in all, imperfections put aside, uh, one side, and I believe it's the Clinton team, is more prepared, more professional, and I have more personal security that they will lead the country in the right direction. Congressman, do you think Pence goes on offense tonight? I mean, if anything... The one thing I can predict yeah. he'll do, he will heap incredible praise on Donald Trump because Donald Trump eats it up and expects it. <laughs> and you know and he's going to be live tweeting about what he's saying yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, so. No, the, uh, so the one thing he's going to say, Donald Trump is wonderful here, 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 and here. And I've never met someone uh, more fit to be leader, more fit to be president. I mean, he's just going to say it because Trump will demand it. Yeah. Except we've already seen Pence, since he was put on the ticket, break ranks with Trump about John McCain and his war record and whether he was a hero. He already broke ranks as it related to Paul Ryan and McConnell when Trump was hedging whether or not he'd support him. He went out and supported him. He already um, broke ranks with them on the birth thing and also on the Khan family. And the income tax. And the income tax. No, no, he will break ranks. I was just making the point that... <laughs> He'll say that he's still awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm almost, I'm almost ready to bet my house that he will, he will sing great praise about Donald. Donald expects it and you know the the crazy thing about Trump is you know I re, uh, we have a Republican governor from New Mexico and she said she had reservations and he said well she's just a terrible governor and then some other governor says I think Donald Trump is really good and, so, oh, and then he responds and says that governor that governor is really great <laughs> so. now if you're Pence Andrew I mean, clearly every poll has shown here that this has been a very good week, that she not only won the debate, but the momentum's picked up. You've seen the news angles, and there's a non-story and a story. First of all, the story about the taxes, we'll be talking about that next segment. I'm sure it's going to come up today. But also the, the threat that was hanging out there that uh, Assange was going to have some big WikiLeak drop here and some game changer that every right-wing website was saying that this was going to be like manna from heaven, didn't happen today. Yet. N yet. Uh, but you would have thought if it was going to happen the way it was set up, it would have happened today. Nonetheless, does Pence just try and do no harm today? Or does he go after both Pence's <clears throat> uh, social issues record, pro-life, he was for uh, the religious freedom law here that could have banned gays from being served, all those things? Or does he just say Trump 500 times and try and make Pence defend it? There, there are some interesting dynamics at play tonight. First of all, Pence is going to have to try to establish a certain level of competency uh, to offset what has been seen as a lack of competency shown by Donald Trump in the debate last week. And so he's going to try to position himself as the bedrock, especially given what we've heard, or for example, we heard about the outreach from the Trump campaign to John Kasich earlier in the campaign. Hey, you be in charge of domestic policy and foreign policy, and I'll be in charge of making America great again. So Pence might actually be the guy running the country in a uh, in a Trump presidency. So he'll try to establish uh, some, some confidence in, in policy standards. I think we'll have a much bigger policy debate tonight than we saw last week among the presidential candidates. Having said that, there is some daylight between Pence and Trump on some issues, including the Muslim ban, and Pence is to the right of Trump on abortion. So I expect Kane to go after him and try to shine some, some uh, daylight on that separation between Trump and Pence. I think Pence, meanwhile, will try to hit Kane with some of Hillary Clinton's issues, including Benghazi, including emails, yeah. and make him defend Hillary Clinton. And he also, uh, Kane also voted and flip-flopped on TPP, so the whole trade issue and everything else. But, Dom, I know the job is when the VP, as the Congress said, you say everything great about uh, your running mate mm -hmm. here. And I don't think he's certainly going to 
but you're also auditioning in many ways. If things don't go too well in 30-something days, you want to be number one for consideration four good years point. from now. Good point. Good point. Um, hey, that's a delicate balance. You've got to be good. But I'm sure Pence is thinking, the way things look right now, it don't look too good. Um, I don't want to be saddled with this guy. It was kind of like what Ryan was doing four years ago, if you believe the polls, just around this time. Do you time. really think that he doesn't think it looks too good? I think the Trump folks... Are I think so Pence doesn't think it looks... I think Pence is practical enough that he sees they've got to draw, like, the best straight that they can have, yeah. barring some October surprise. I just don't see the math. Plus, Pence has actually run for stuff before. He knows you need to have state operations. He knows you need to do advertising. He knows you need to do get out the vote. None of those exist for Trump. Except he draws huge crowds. It's mind-boggling. And they'll vote for him. But ask Bernie Sanders how well that worked out when people actually cast ballots. Sanders had much bigger turnout at his events than Hillary Clinton did. She's the Democratic nominee, not Bernie Sanders. Yeah, but he did pretty well. <laughs> One thing about Pence, though, he better have an answer to the Kelly Ayotte question. He better have an answer to the question as to whether Donald Trump's a role model, because you know he's going to get that tonight. Yep. And, and the other thing is, I think Tim Kaine will do an excellent job as a conservative Catholic who himself does not support abortion of really painting him as a right winger out of touch with ordinary women throughout the country of all faiths who do not like such an ideologue and are fearful of such a person being in a position of authority. I think that uh, he's the ideal person to attack Pence mm. on that. And I you, think he's very vulnerable. You think uh, when it's all said and done, we do a collective shrug at the end of the night here? Do you think there's some either damage or some good done for either candidate? collective shrug. I think that Pence, going back to your uh, question that you asked, is, um, uh, let's look at it this way. Tough re-election battle where it's predicted he would have lost in Indiana or a national platform where you're set up as perhaps the top contender four years from now. You pick the latter. I think you're right. <laughs> Coming up next, um, the story of the week here. We're going to talk to a tax expert about Trump's taxes and what did that leaked tax return show, what did it leave out, and what unanswered questions still remain.